Uh, well, let me uh, thank the uh, distinguished gentleman from California uh, and thank him uh, for both the background that he brings to the United States Congress as a uh, insurance uh, commissioner uh, for a state and the distinguished gentleman from New York made some very valid points. As a member of the House Judiciary Committee, in fact, we have lived with this for now almost uh, 10 years. I mean, remember trying to reform the bankruptcy code uh, to protect people from things like uh, uh, alimony payments or, or the being uh, women being denied uh, uh, the ability to receive alimony payments uh, because uh, credit card companies wanted to stand in front of the alimony payments and take first first line. So we have seen people being destroyed by a number of ways, and we do know that by catastrophic illnesses, uh, they are destroyed. I just want to focus on two points, two or three points. One, the big sign about 45,000 Americans dying every year. I don't know why that doesn't send out a clarion call. Uh, we should not be uh, so uh, insensitive to life that 45,000 people dying does not impact our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. We've been saying this over and over again, 45,000 people. That means somebody is dying as we speak because they did not have uh, life insurance, health insurance or that they were denied. And I want to remind uh, our colleagues of some horrible stories. I remember that, uh, that of a young girl who had leukemia. And it was on national television. And I remember, uh, I think the company was Cigna, where the family actually went to the insurance company uh, and begged for this young girl to be able to have this very special uh, blood uh, procedure. Uh, and they were turned away, and they were turned away, and they were turned away until finally public embarrassment, the news media, and the family went again. The tragedy is that when the company finally approved the right of this young girl, 11 years old, it was too late. The doctors could not perform the procedure. And so we have seen any number of incidences where because of lack of insurance, lack of insurance, uh, we have not been able to save a life. What about the Roman Sachs that said just a couple of weeks ago, if you want to make a buck, the best place to put your money is the nation's health insurance, the nation's insurers. You'll never have to worry about them going out of business. You'll never have to worry about them trying to save, save you any dollars. And you'll always know and count on them raising the premiums over and over again. What did you say? 94% of those, of, of the, uh, the premiums are raised 94 percent. A family of four will see their premiums go up two to three thousand dollars a year. It's interesting to observe the effect of that. This is Blue Cross of California. Uh, two years ago, their profit was almost 300 million dollars. The effect of those rate increases, the first rate increase, not the second one, but the first one, which was around 50 percent, was to increase their profits to 2.3 billion. And now they want to add another 30 percent or 20, about 30 percent average on top of that. So what will their profits be after all of that? Uh, it's shameful. What the legislation does is to rein in the excessive increases in the insurance company's premiums. It does that by requiring that a percentage, that a higher percentage of their total premium go to medical services. Now you want to go check Wall Street. You know, go on Charles Schwab, check the Wall Street thing. The, uh, if you want to make an investment, they will say invest in the companies whose medical loss ratio is low and trending downward. That simply means that they're paying less for medical care right. and more for profit. We're going to turn that on its head. We're going to force the insurance companies to pay for medical services and less for profits. Let me now call I upon our colleague. Can I just make one from, final point yes, before I, and so I can please. close? The final point is that what this bill will do as well is provide competition. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, a good friend came on the floor and talked about a state where there's only one company. Uh, my state, a big state, soon to gain in population through the census, Texas, three. So this bill, once it passes, uh, will open up the doors of choice for those who have insurance or those employer-based insurance because we're not taking away employer-based insurance. I think that we're moving in the right direction and I hope that uh, this story will be told tomorrow in the right way. And I yield back to the gentleman. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And we should also remember that in that competition model, we'll be creating exchanges in which insurance companies will be uh, there. They'll have to compete 
and they'll compete on a standard policy. Let me now call upon our colleague from Ohio, Mr. Ryan. You know, I, I've got to yield.